Okay, so I want to make a short video about having purpose and intensity on each swing of your subiri. I wanted to make a video about different things to look after or to be mindful when doing subuti, but I felt it was going to be too long. I'm just going to make this quick and short. One of the things I see a lot, um, especially when we're being lazy or maybe beginners, is that you see this subuti that's kind of like bouncing out of the end. I'm going to call it bouncing subuti, where it's a cut that it kind of, right at the moment of impact, it's already coming back. So what that does is exactly is training you to slow down your shinai closer to the moment of impact. And while maybe you're getting a workout with your arms, your cut is not as sharp as it, as it should be. Okay, so listen, as I'm going through this video, I, I realized there's something I forgot to say and I kinda wanna give you a little bit more context on this bounce suburi. So this is what bounce suburi looks like. If I slow it down, you see that number one thing, there's no proper tenawichi on the right hand. And secondly, the right hand is also bringing my sword back up. To keep the swing going like that, the right arm is the one pulling back up. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do suburi fast, like one cut after the other. What I'm saying is avoid the cuts that are not being sharp and with purpose and with intention of cutting. So the key thing that's happening here that makes this suburi bad is that my right arm is the one pulling back up the shinai after it makes the impact. So normally in regular suburi, my right arm stops the sore at the end of the cut because the left hand is putting 100% effort, right? So you get a sharp stop, right? With this type of suburi, the right arm stops it but it stops it by pulling back up. And pulling back up this way is not the proper way of cutting. I'm doing more this motion rather than, what you need to do to bring the sword back up is that you need to use the left hand to start bringing the sword back up. That's the main reason why this is a bad type of subody. What you want is to make sure you use the left hand because at the end of the day, you're gonna use less energy. You're gonna get more continuous attacks if you use the left hands instead of using the right hand. I see a lot, especially when people doing a lot of fast and small wasas, that they want to do hit by using the right arm rather than using your left hand to execute multiple waza. So let me get you back to the video. Oh, one thing, please don't forget to subscribe, like if you enjoyed this video, and share this video with everybody. Thank you very much. Let me take you back to the video. So the way I was taught and the way I, I was explained is that your sore should accelerate all the way to the end. One thing that you want is to keep that sore accelerating until the very last second, until the very last moment when it impacts and it should be a sharp stop. I'm going to make a whole different video about this and breaking it down further, but I kind of just want to introduce it and introduce the concept of having a purpose within your cutting. The way I was taught to approach subudi or to make sure that we have this is that number one thing, you want to make sure you do a sharp stop at the end. You're looking to have intensity on every cut. So maybe slowing down your subudi is fine, but you want to make sure that every cut comes down with intensity. If you're doing slower subudi, maybe take longer between each swing, but make sure that each strike comes down with intensity. You want to make sure that you cut through, use your left hand, and your right arm to stop the, the shinai rather than push down with it. The ways I understand subudi or the how to execute subudi is that from this position right here, you're gonna use the left hand to bring down the sword towards your target, right? The right arm, it's going to follow the sword. It's, it's right on the shinai, but it's not pushing the shinai forward, okay? Um, but also, in order to execute Tenouchi, there's something that's happening. The wrist, you need to have a little bit of flexibility with the wrist. You cannot come down on the swing 
without flexibility in the wrist. So you gotta keep that in mind. But the most important part is towards the end, your hand executes this type of motion where it kind of squeezes towards you. And what that does, it gives you that little extra speed at the end, right in the middle of the swing, it adds that extra speed and at the end it does add that sharp speed towards your, to your tip to make sure that the sword can cut through your target or to get a sharp impact if you are, you know, doing kendo. So I wanted to bring that up. Of course, I'm going to make another video where I'm going to explain a little bit further. I'm going to break it down even more so to make it simpler. But I kind of just wanted to start putting out things or ideas that I think we should be looking after in order to improve our subuti. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, share it, and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Any thoughts, any comments, any questions, please leave them in the comment below. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you very much.